So I want to discuss about volume 14 being that it is the final part of season 4 of the anime. Now of course as a reminder season 4 does cover volumes 10, 11 and 14 of the light novels. The other two volumes in between will be saved for the movie so just wanted to make that very clear and there are two more volumes out after volume 4 so 15 to 16 that are out in released in Japan exclusively right now until we get an English translation. So I want to discuss about is volume 14 bad depending on the perspective and again you don't have to agree with any opinions but I'm merely just looking at different perspectives and kind of discussing about the strengths and weaknesses not necessarily like saying it's bad this is a fact no this is about discussing about the writer's mindset because for me personally I've talked about Philip as a character and volume 14 but I've never really given full context to some of my thoughts on it is that I do believe that Volume 14 was not intended to play out the way it was and that Volume 14 is a pivot in the writer's writing style and the reason for that is after Volume 13 the writer made the decision that he was going to shorten the story down to 17 volumes at the time and then it ended up being 18 because of the two new volumes ended up being, being broken into two parts but he ended up deciding to cut the story short and that's where I noticed in volume 14 when it first came out that he changed his writing style to going a much more slower piece by piece and then just started picking up the pace a lot and the reason why I think a lot of anime only fans really like volume 14 in an anime format is because the pacing is very fast and because the anime did make sure to adapt every single component of it but then when you look at volume 12 they decided to oh, sorry volume 11 which is the Shaltier arc, they decided to skip some stuff out of that, which disappoints me because they did a really good job of volume 10, they skipped some stuff for volume 11 and then went very thoroughly through volume 14. Of course there are little little minor details always going to be missing, but they did a very good job at covering as much as possible compared to their usual. So I think the reason for that is because volume 14 is a lot more faster paced, so they were able to kind of take as much as possible because of the pacing was a lot more energetic a lot more again going super fast gotta go fast and because of that anime only fans see it from a different perspective but from a reader's perspective i've noticed his writing style pivoted very quickly and went a lot quicker and a lot of it has to do with philip and again this is just a personal opinion that i've always believed philip's story was destined for more and that's just because as much as philip is an idiot and we can all agree that him making the decisions he made in volume 14 does make sense because he is an idiot he would make a stupid decision like trying to think that he could rival eyes because he was so delusional in his own mind but I do believe what he did in volume 14 kind of goes against his overall objectives because he was madly in love with Albedo or Albedo however you want to pronounce it and he was very much determined to try and find a way to marry her or get rid of her and I believe that what he was going to do was try to suck up to Irons, even though he wouldn't probably see Irons, but he would try and do stuff in a political sort of way to try and appease the, the, the Sorcerer Kingdom and Irons. And that was what the intent was for Philip, was to be used as a pawn to start a conflict. And so you'd be like, well, it did start a conflict in Volume 14, but I believe it was meant to be something different. But it if it went with the way that I think the writer was intending, it would have lasted a lot longer. It would have been at least another two more volumes, or at least one to two, depending on yeah, with volume 14. And that the intent was that Philip would try and do something to appease Irons or the Sorcerer Kingdom and try and pick a conflict on his behalf, and then Irons and well, Demiurge and Albedo would use that as a way to then antagonize an opponent to attack. So the, the, the idea would be Philip would be desperate to try and get a political marriage, to win favour with the Sorcerer Kingdom, to win favour of Irons, so he would try and do something to prove his worth. He would be like, okay, I'm going to attack an enemy that he could possibly oppose Irons and really curry up the favour, build it up, be, you know, Irons will owe me a debt of gratitude, and then I will sit there and say, hand me Albedo as my wife, and then that's how he would win. So he would then pick a fight with someone else, that someone else would then get angry, they would then retaliate against the Sorcerer Kingdom and Irons, and then 
Irons and the Sorcerer Kingdom and Demiurge and Albedo doing their fun little games, they would then show, hey, Philip has no association with us. He did this on his own free will, claiming he's doing it on our behalf. That's not true. You've just attacked us un without reason because of him. We're now going to declare war on you and also wipe out Philip at the same time and take out anyone associated with him. And so they'd be able to kill two birds with one stone. And so that's kind of how I always seen it, was that Philip was always going to be used as a puppet to try and stir conflict internally and with others so that they could then have a proxy reason to then declare war against others without seeming like they're the aggressor. They're just simply the innocent individual being attacked by others. And then they'd claim, you know, the whole, oh, we got attacked, unprovoked, we're going to attack back. It's a similar kind of thing with the tomb invasion, where they used and manipulated an individual to send adventurers into the tomb and then said, hey, you invaded our territory un you know, unprovoked. We want retribution. And so they brought the head of the person and then they started dialogue, which then allowed the Irons Demiurge to kind of influence and then slowly take over. That's kind of how I think it was going to be done. It was more of a political game. And the reason why I believe that was the intent is because that's kind of how the writer's always been, kind of making these interesting political mind games and intrigue. And that's what I really loved about Overlord was those kind of aspects of the light novel series and seeing the comedic aspect of it as well with Philip trying to desperately win favor with Irons and then be like, hey, you know, I want a political marriage with Albedo. That going terribly wrong is what I was kind of thinking was going to be the overall outcome. And the end result would have been the same. So with how Volume 14 ended, Riv Phillips' fate would have been the exact same. But the destination to get there would have, have been different in my eyes. Now, I know some people will probably disagree and say, no, 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 no. This is what the author always intended. But again, we can never really know unless the author comes out and says, this is what I was intending. Because... He has stated that he was picking up the pace of the story, that he wanted to finish it sooner. So clearly some things needed to be cut and pruned down to allow him to end the story much more sooner. So that's as far as I can go on my fear of saying, well, these are the facts. The writer clearly said this and the rest of it's all just my speculation on what he has changed to kind of prune it down. And the whole story with Philip is one of those, which is why I do believe Volume 14 was intended for much more. Now, I don't think Volume 14 is bad because it's constructed well, but my only issue with it is I saw much more potential for the story, and especially with the other stuff that played out at the end of Volume 14, but none of that would have played out if things ended up going differently, or they probably would have but much later on and maybe slightly different and tweaked. So I also do think the whole mecha suit was also only added because the author was talking about on Twitter about how he was playing different games and there's a specific game that he was playing and he was talking about it a lot on Twitter that had mecha suits in it and he did mention that he kind of liked it all and I do feel like he ended up putting that mecha suit in volume 14 because of his like for that game and so that's why it kind of went down that direction which it really depends on the individual if you're okay with that or not. I don't really see a problem with it because there are a lot of MMOs out there that do add ridiculous amounts of like ridiculous like power like that. Though the whole flying thing, because that mecha suit can fly, it is kind of a little bit of a uh, ridiculously strong kind of power suit. But I mean, that's kind of the point. It's meant to be for power leveling purposes. That being said, if you compare it to the new world, it is insanely powerful. It's a really good way to buff up those that are weak and honestly I, I think Irons being the collector that he is I'm kind of surprised he never actually did have one of those mecha suits or at least had some that the guild kind of left behind guild members so I do kind of feel like that is a slight contradiction again I know I might trigger some people but that's just a personal opinion because Irons is a collector he likes collecting items so why would he not want to collect and seeing as he played the game like 24 7 almost like he played it a lot and he did everything in that game why would he have not collected one of those mecha suits yes he didn't need it but he's a collector the others did it why didn't he also why didn't they maybe give the items as well so i do find it a little bit strange that he never had one of those but at the same time if he had one of those 
that would be even more ridiculous because then he could give it to someone else that ends up serving him. So he could be like, and I'm going to make up an example here. Climb. Climb finally decides to follow Irons in all will. I mean, at the end of 14, we know what happens. But let's just say Climb decides to serve Irons without any doubt that he'll ever betray him. And Irons said, here you go, use this mecha suit. And then he could go around protecting Renair and doing Irons' bidding, that kind of thing. I'm just using it as an example because he's weak, you give the suit, then he's super powerful. And then Irons could give it to people to use and if someone ever misused it, then he could just go hunt them down and kill them anyway. It's not like the suit's ridiculously powerful to the point where it can do... Well, it can be annoying but it, if it got misused, but he would be able to retrieve it. So I just feel like it's one of those situations where... It would have probably broken the story more if Irons had one, but at the same time, being the collector that he is, kind of makes sense that he'd have one at least, one. So I do kind of find the author kind of added things in just for his own personal liking, but didn't fully think it through. And that's something that I have seen other fans point out, which is why I bring it up, because it's an interesting point that other fans have brought up. That's why I'm playing the devil's advocate there, because I've seen fans say, hey, the writer is starting to contradict himself with how he's pushing Eyes' character direction. So it really just depends on the individual. Some people, you know, agree. Some people don't. Some people get very defensive about the writer contradicting the story i've seen some very spicy comments about that so i, I kind of like looking at all the different angles you could just see it as being like hey you know Irons just decided that that one point he didn't need it he didn't want to collect it and that's that it just that, that was that despair of the moment he was off doing something else but i can definitely understand why other fans would see the other perspective as well so i'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below where do you stand on all these different components of volume 14 and then the story beyond that and how the direction of the story is going i've talked about volume 15 and 16 in separate videos so if you want those check out those videos but it's going to be an interesting ride to see the final two volumes which will be 17 and 18 so those will be the final two interested to see how those play out any and all thoughts are definitely welcome in the comment section down below. But if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe for more anime content, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.